This is the story of the one. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. You prepared your kids for their first steps. The first day at school, their first dance, that big test, all the wins along the way. With a College Savings Iowa 529 plan, you'll prepare them for even more. Register before May 31st for a chance to win a $1,000 contribution. Visit collegesavingsiowa.com to make the first move toward a bright future. College Savings Iowa. It's how parents get through college. Administered by the State Treasurer of Iowa. Hashtag no music, no intro. Another episode of Hashtag Saints Twitter podcast coming at you. Oh, man. Whew, we are less than 30 days away, Ryan. The, the draft... The 2023 NFL Draft is around the corner. Uh, we are still, as a podcast, sorting out the details for the hashtag Saints Twitter podcast uh, draft live stream in person. Um, mm. I think we got about 12 to 15 people set to attend. Um, so we're finalizing those plans. You and you and me will be in New Orleans on the 27th, uh, around one. Of, well, actually, flying the day before on the 26th uh other draft and that's the same week or same week in time as jazz fest so that mm. was like that last week of april in new orleans is just a, is set to be epic and i want it to remain epic and the for what for that to happen the saints just got to draft good players like i i think i've please just have this is the first draft truly like in years where I, I do have like my, my handful of players I would love for them to draft. Um, I don't even know if I would say I even have a draft bay this year. Like I've, I've always had a draft bay. Always had a draft bay. Don't even got a draft bay this year, man. Just, um, what was it? Yesterday. Yeah. No, it was Monday. No, Tuesday. Yesterday. Uh, my, my car battery was dead. I you had, to, oh. had to wait to get a to get a jump, and that's like an hour. And I was I was waiting, and I was, had to take my daughter to school. So we came back. You know, we came back to the house, and she went back to sleep. And I was like, all right, let me just watch a couple of players. And that, that was fun. like I watched five to six minutes of uh, Michael Meyer, Mayer, shit, every every fucking time. Uh, Darnell Washington and Jordan, Jordan Addison, just like enough to like kind of get a feel for who they are player wise. And I was like, all right, I feel, I feel like I'm done. Like I don't need no more. Don't need no more. Um but be, so this is our annual uh same sort of podcast uh mock draft simulator episode. It's probably not the most uh greatest podcast to listen to. <laughs> it's definitely more of a visual thing. Uh I believe back in the the Saints Talk podcast days that I had with uh, Nick way back in the day, we did this. We did the same thing similarly, where we had our mock draft episodes. So it was kind of just being taken over from that. Um, so we're gonna like, like the, the nitty gritty, the main event of the podcast. Um, we have the Pro Football Network uh, mock draft simulator, and then we have the NFL mock draft database simulator, just to give like different results and things like that. We're only going to do two rounds, bro. Two rounds. Don't have, don't, don't know who the players are beyond round two. Ain't got nothing to tell you about, you know, Jack Harris from, from some D2 school. I ain't no. got, I ain't got don't, don't have it. Uh, bro, I was listening to, uh, I was listening to Ross Tucker. Oh, Lord. Um, God bless you. The, the, I just check. I usually check the ones out we have with Greg. With, with Greg, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, he, he has another podcast with uh, Emery. You know Emery uh, Hunt. Emery, Emery Hunt. Yeah. Really? Yeah, oh, he does one every right. week where they just talk college draft and all that stuff. Interesting. Emery okay. came up. Emery came up, man. But bro, you know Emery. Emery got a draft guide, bro. He he got something on one thousand prospects, bro. One thousand. 
sicko. Seek help. What the fuck? Seek <laughs> help. So start a family. <laughs> start a family. Go play outside. Get on Tinder. Like, what? <laughs> bro? Only 200 what? some players get drafted, bro. I'm like, what? Studying a thousand players? Ain't no way you sitting there studying a thousand players. I just, I just no way. I mean, there's no you way. Just like, you just like, this, this, this nigga lying. <laughs> like, chat GPT, bro. Just chat GPT. Give me an analysis of every player. <laughs> um, But before we before we get into kind of the main event, just wanted to hit on some some Saints news. I I, I do briefly want to talk about the Lamar thing because it is such a huge story in the football world right now. Uh, But let's start with a little Saints news. A couple of days ago, the Saints came to terms, one-year deal with Brian Edwards, right receiver, uh, formerly out of Mississippi State, right? No, no, that is not right. Uh, Where did did Debo go to school? I feel terrible for not knowing this off the top of my head. Um, so South Carolina, maybe, uh, maybe I don't know. This, this is how far I feel away, like from football, that my mind's like not. Yeah, he went South Carolina. All right, Ooh. so that's what Brian Edwards went to school. Part of me is it's funny because I remember watching Brian Edwards as a prospect, and I absolutely wanted the saints to draft him like in round two or round three um because th- these are keep in mind these are this is back when we were just starving starving mm-hmm. for any little modicum of help at right receiver um kind of the sean payton's last years and one thing i do really enjoy about this signing is the connection that Brian Edwards had with Derek Carr when they played mm-hmm. in Oakland or Las Vegas, rather. Uh, like if you just go back and just watch 2020 I mean, 2021 highlights, you like, it was very apparent. Um, I'm not expecting the signing to be anything more than it is. He car, comes in, he's a wide receiver, you know, wide receiver four, what have you. But the fact that I, I do expect him. I do expect him to potentially make the team. I will say that right now. I expect him to make the team. Um, can we can, can we get Traquan? Can we can we can we get done with that? Can we finish that part? Well, of the, please. But it was one of those little little moves where it's like you know they're they're, they're trying to you know showing look goodwill towards Derek Carr. Um, I can quote unquote report that the Saints were very interested in signing. Brian Edwards last off season before he signed with the Falcons. Um, and then, so the fact that they're getting him a year later, just a good little low risk, you know, little, little move that fills fills the roster. Right. No, man, it, it, it won't make any news headlines or something, but it'll be one of those plays, you know, like if he pops up making plays in week two, well, <laughs> Brian Edwards, I forgot about him. You know what I'm saying? And he's still young. He's still young. Um, his best 24. year, 24. 24. His best year was, you know, with Derek Carr in 2021 in that John Gruden offense. Like we said, that's similar to the Saints offense. Um, you know, just like a lot of people, 2022 offense was up and down. He was up and down. Uh, well. <clears throat> And that, well, I'm sorry. He 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 was he went to the Falcons, and I was just you know just doing some research. Like he got hurt like real early in training camp with the Falcons, um, and didn't get back on the field till like week one, and he just never got right. He apparently had some kind of shoulder injury. He was cleared to play, but wasn't really healthy. I don't know if it was problems with the offense or whatever. Wound up being a healthy scratch. You know, so it did, you know, it did make you kind of scratch your head. Like, why, you know, it's not like the Falcons had a super deep at wide receiver. It's like, why wasn't he producing, you know, but I think a lot of it, hopefully a lot of it was just maybe a little injury, being in a new offense, you know, an offense that wasn't really great anyway. Um, So he's come into a situation where he knows the quarterback, the quarterback knows him. It's an offense he knows. And maybe hopefully he's, you know, he's healthy. 
that could come in and, you know, not ask him to be like the number one wide receiver, but just come in and make plays where you can compete, you know, hopefully, you know, if if something is wrong with, you know, Mike Thomas, you know, as far as like, you know, as far as him getting healthy, you know, he could be like that physical receiver that can take some of those steps. And if Mike Thomas is healthy, you know, it's just another weapon that you got a nice physical wide receiver that can get downfield and get some of the immediate stuff, you know, do all the things you need to do. So, I mean, it's an upgrade. If he's healthy and playing like in, it's an upgrade over Traquan Smith, easy. It's an upgrade over Mar- uh, Marquez Calloway, who's, you know, one, with the Broncos now, right? Yep. So, so, I mean, look, it's a good move, man. It's a no-risk signing. doesn't cost any money. Um, but it's just one of those nice, good, quiet moves. That I was like, oh, okay. You know, we'll see. Yeah, it, you know, in, in, impressive. The Michael Thomas thing is kind of a good – segue of just going into um at the owners meeting kind of op- you know media had the opportunity to talk to a lot of head coaches you know in the nfl if not all of them uh so dennis allen was uh you know spoke to the media and you know revealed that michael thomas is not 100 percent. i'm like that didn't that didn't like surprise me honestly <clears throat> um and you know, there's a lot, there's a long time. He essentially has like what, four and a half months to be ready um, for the mm-hmm. season. I believe if my memory is correct, he got his surgery um, on his ankle or no, it was his toe. Sorry. Ankle toe. surgery on his toe, toe in November. And it's like, just yep. let, let this man fully come back healthy, please. Right. Like there is no need to rush him. If, Brian Edwards makes a team and he, you know, does enough to he can maybe be that wide receiver three um, in the interim as Mike Thomas is fully healthy. Let him come back healthy because, again, it's a huge, huge, huge if. But if he's able to come back healthy, that is such an boost, like kind of like an unexpected boost to the offense that yeah. is sorely needed. Oh man, like I'm just hoping, bro. Hoping and praying that toe is good to go. It's uh, yeah, I wasn't surprised either to hear the either to hear the news that he's not 100. percent Like, come on, man, dislocated toe. It's just gonna take time. But you know, I understand the frustration. You know, just it's just like, oh man, like time is not 100. He ain't been 100 percent for like four years. I'm like, God damn it, you know. So I, you know, I get the frustration, but you just gotta let it play out, man. You just gotta let it play out. And hopefully, you know, at the end of the day, it'll, you know, it'll pay off because um, it's, it's crunch time for him, bro. Like, this is Mike Thomas's career. It's all on the line for this year. <laughs> all the chips are on the table. So we'll see. Um, but, you know, like I said, I like to move with Brian Edwards. Uh, Always, I, I want to call him, I call him Braylon, Braylon Edwards every fucking time. I keep, I keep having to catch myself, bro. I keep having to catch myself. <laughs> Every fucking time. Bro. And look, and look, it doesn't preclude them from making any other moves at wide receiver no. in the draft or whatever. You know? It does not. And I think for me personally, for them, like I would feel comfortable for them wrapping up this free agency period is if they could I, I mean I know they want to add an edge rusher, a veteran edge rusher. Um I know that edge rushers like Frank Clark, we've gone over. Oh um, my God! Would somebody else sign him, please? Please, 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 bro. just sign him. Please, I just can't. I can't do it. I, I can't. I can't. Like you, you have created such. You haven't even won a game yet, and it's off season alone. There's enough goodwill. There's enough good vibes. There's buy in. I, I, I still look at them sideways for going after Deshaun Watson. Uh, there's still a lot of things that happened last season that makes me roll my eyes that I can't even like verbally say out loud of just how bad things were. But all that said, you've at right now we're like, all right, like we we see the vision. We don't know if it's going to work, but we see, we see it, it and we and we apl- applause it. Just don't fuck it up. Like there's so like Yannick Ngakwe. Um, Leonard Floyd, like get clowny. I I don't 
care. Justin don't Houston, care. he he don't even he doesn't even fit with this. I don't care. You could just get another edge rush that isn't Frank Clark, and to me that Please. would just put the put the bow on the off season. It's like, all right, I don't have to feel disgusted or annoyed with with cheering for this team with this player on the team. And I and I feel like maybe people either it, so much time has passed that people either don't remember what Flint Clark did in at, at Michigan State or like they just don't care anymore. But this man knocked a, a woman out, a, like knocked the woman out unconscious, was kicked out of school, um, and then also threatened to beat up the hotel manager. And then he just is not a good. Fucking person. And Still that, isn't a good person. Some, he got like some gun charges. Gun, multiple gun charges within within the last like six seven months. Like he he just, over the years absolutely absolutely, absolutely showing you who he is. Why why right. is this even? I think a I think a friend told me perfectly. Just in regards to this Saints regime with Da at the helm of how, a big difference of how it differed. With Sean Payton, I'm not trying to say that Sean Payton was a saint. I'm not trying to say that at all. No, no pun intended. But I'm not trying to say he was this holier than now person. But Sean Payton had this innate gift of judging character, yeah. and if he felt, and he still does. He's, he's coaching the NFL. If he feels or felt or feels that like just something isn't right about person or more you know more aptly a player he listened to that um like and i and with da like my friend basically says like saints don't have any morals with, with da at the helm what we saw it last off season like <laughs> clearly they did not <laughs> so it was just like hey did you guys did you guys do your due diligence so, all good okay oh uh, yeah, we good oh good cool cool cool, cool. Yeah, all, right. all right cool 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 um it's just, I, you've done well as an organization thus far. Don't fuck it up, man. Just, just don't. Um, just stay away from that, please. Anyway, I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk about it anymore. I do want to talk about. Can, can I just also once say before we? I didn't listen to the whole D8 interview. I did. I, but I, I get it. As a beat reporter, you want to ask about the players that they've signed in free agency. I get that. But, like, does nobody at, like ask about, like, Zach Bond? Does nobody ask about, like, Adam Falcon? Like, I don't understand. Like, these are players that were drafted, like, in the second and third fucking round. We can't it was, ask. It was, and it was set up. It was set up. Nick Undale asked him about the, you know, the athletic profiles of defensive ends and pass rushes they like to get. And, you know. DA was DA was talking this shit, bro. He's like, look, since 2017, we've been top five in run defense, top five in sacks. He said, and if you really want to look at it closer, more like top three. DA was talking this shit, bro. I was like, all right. <laughs> Talk your shit, DA. You know, he wasn't lying, but at the same time, I would have followed up like, you know, like, but can't they use a little like what about what about when you face Jalen Hurts? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. About them running quarterbacks, like mm. you know, how, how, how you look in those situations? I would have. That's what I would have come back with. I, I, I just want somebody to ask that, and I wanted to know about Zach Bond, bro, because you got this shimmering, decent speed rusher. He's not great. He's a decent speed rusher. That's just sitting there, bro. Like, can just we there, come bro. up with look, 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 look at Hassan Reddick? Mm-hmm. Went to went to Arizona. Got drafted by Arizona. They ain't know what to do with him. Eventually went to the Panthers, you know, dad, he had a kind of a breakout there and went to the Eagles. They used him as a fifth pass rusher, as a fifth pass rusher to get lined up on tight ends and chips and all that. And he just wreaked havoc, you know. So I, why can't we do that with Zach Paul? You know what I'm saying? Maybe it don't work. Then if it don't work, it's like, okay, he's just crap. He ain't shit. He's not a good player. But at least try it, you know. And, I, you know, they did a little bit last year, but not enough, man. Like, I need to see it. I need to see Zach Bond rushing the pass because we know he's not a middle linebacker, which is what they tried to 
pencil him in as when he got drafted, and we which were, was which we was were like which was insane from the jump, Ryan. Like we were all listen over to that the, shit. You could go listen to the podcast, and we were like, huh? <laughs> We were disgusted. Um, and I, I think that's just something that's just annoying to me. It's, and again, I'm not this is not me throwing throwing shade at anyone who covers a team who may listen to the podcast, but it's just like that's to me, that's low hanging fruit. And it just just not being not being addressed, man. Like that 2020 draft class, or you know if I don't know. Uh, again, I don't listen to the whole thing. And you said Nick asked a question about their profile, and I, I'm guessing it was it was maybe in in reference of like, well, you got the Marcus Davenport and you got the Peyton Turner using this profile, and they haven't worked out. But like my 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 question would be, well, since the recent draft picks of Marcus Davenport and Peyton Turner, and you know, not having you know a vast amount of success in the league, have, is there have you guys as Evaluation wise, change your scouting. Like, is that profile changing? Exactly. Something's not working. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot you could have beat up on, but you know how it is, bro. Like, you know, it's it's you know, covering Saints media. You know, it's I do, I do. There's a fine line, fine line you gotta walk. You know, I, I do. Anyway, um, can we? talk about this Lamar thing like just, we need we need to talk about it and if we if we want to be real right you know I'm glad you know Saints as as our our guy in discord um David Ty Harley says one thing you cannot question the Saints about is being they try to win and you you cannot take that away from them whatsoever Part of me is like, okay, if they if you're trying to win, right? And they got Derek Carr, and that's great. Don't mind that at all. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't they have like, not signed Derek Carr and made an offer for Lamar instead? If y'all was going to sign Deshaun Watson last year to a huge contract, like, and obviously would have traded draft picks to do what? what what's the difference? Well, I, I think it would have cost more for Lamar. And I think a lot of teams, like I, I heard, you think so? Say, no, like that's the, I, that's the thing I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know because you know, coach, coaches and GMs different. I, I heard Pete Carroll say at the oldest meeting, he was like, he just assumed they couldn't afford Lamar, so it wasn't even like an option in his mind. Like you know what I'm saying? And I do wonder if a lot of teams just kind of cut that off in the head, like, hey, like we we can't get Lamar. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sure, but like, like, I, me, but I like how do you? I guess my question is, and this is not so much a Saints question. This is more just a general question of other teams. A league question, yeah, yeah. Like, like don't at, at, you got to fucking ask at least though. And I, I do think this goes back to the whole agent thing. Um, it's like you're not a part of the party, bro. You're not a part of the little league circle. You know, and this is not to criticize Lamar for not having an agent. If he want to handle business like that, you know, do it. You know what I'm saying? But right. I do think there are some costs that come with that because it's such a fraternity. The agents, the executives, the media, it's a big frat party, bro. It's a big, yeah. you know, and it, that costs you when you don't, you when you choose not to be a part of that frat party. So I do think the community there was a communication breakdown because there's the whole thing that it went out just like he wants a fully guaranteed contract. All I've heard from him is that he's not it's not that he doesn't want it, but that's not been his sticking point. But that's right. just been the narrative the whole time. Like the whole time the narrative's been he wants a fully guaranteed contract. And it's like nobody has anybody sat and talked to him about it. Like has you know, any GM or coach went and flew down and in Florida, and just sat with him and talked to him. And like, what are you looking for, bro? Like, what what is what is what is your goal at the end of this? Nobody, like nobody, except for the Ravens, and, and they're you the have ones putting out all this information. All the information, bro. It. I mean, if I can, if I can make make an analogy, just kind of tie it all in together because this is a Saints podcast. That CD 
City Deuce trade happens mm. a week before season happened. Almost immediately, and this, uh, and I want to be clear about this. This is not a dig or knock at or, on Nick or anything like that, because he's he's doing his job right. But there's an article that came out that was, for for the lack of a better word, the team's point of view of justifying why they were trading CD Deuce, right? No one at that point, no one talked, no one talked to CD, no one got inside the story. It was a very, you know, kind of team kind of perspective about it. All this, all this we're hearing in the media in regards to the all this Lamar stuff. That's why we saw Lamar having to feel like on Monday he had to take, he had to control the narrative because it's right. like shit, like my team, like the team that drafted me and blah, blah, and Ozzie Newsom, they traded back in the first round to come get me, blah, blah. And like, they're the ones who kind of praying for my downfall right now, bro. Like, right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so 2018. Nobody has else to. It. Has to. So a lot of the stuff that's coming out in the media isn't like, that's, that's from the Ravens, bro. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, oh, be your own Nobody people. It, it it's still it still kind of just blows my mind of that of you just had a team like Carolina trade a shit ton of picks um, and a good wide receiver to get to the number one pick in the draft, and they're going to draft either C.J. Stroud or they're going to draft Bryce Young. And like no, like just sight unseen, bro. Like that'd be like me going to a dealership. I've had this amazing car. My next door neighbor, he he pull out in a Ferrari, drive that bitch around, top down, just immaculate. Every time I come home, I see my neighbor pulling his car. He waves at me. I, Start doing all. Oh, 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 this 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 bad bitch right here. Oh, I love this car. Oh, just, one of the best cars I've ever had. Oh, just exciting. Won a couple awards in, in a car show. Just beautiful. And you're like, damn. All right, well, I'm gonna go to this dealership and just close my eyes and just point at a car. And they're gonna give me a per, like a interest rate of like 12%. And I'm like, you know what? That's fine. <laughs> like, that's cool. Like, what? What, what what are we doing? <laughs> Logically, it makes no sense. It for the Colts, bro. Like the Colts are sitting, they don't have a quarterback. None. The Colts sitting there with no quarterback, and Jim Irsay out here talking about, "I am against guaranteed contracts. I am against it." Like, well, have you talked to Lamar Jim Irsay? Like, have you sat and talked to the guy? No. You know, has your coach talked to the guy? No. A coach that you just hired from Philly who just went to a Super Bowl with a similar type of style quarterback. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's, it just, man, it makes no sense to me, bro. It just makes no sense. It makes no sense that teams aren't even at least trying to get information and look into it, you know? Because I no. understand, like, some teams are, some teams ain't going to be in on it. Like, look, he because he requires a very, very much a buy-in by the organization. If you take on Lamar – you got to change That's your true. offense. You got to, you know, you got to be willing to do certain things a little different. And not every team is for that, which I, like, even I understand, like, with the Saints, I, they not, they don't want no Lamar offense, you know what I'm saying? No. So, okay. But I, I would, I would like, me personally, I would do it, but I know I understand what, like, certain teams won't. But, like, just the fact that they're just, like, shutting the door before they even peek behind the window, it's just crazy to me. It, I, I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, anything I'm trying to think. Anything else we want may want to hit on, or or touch base on before we we dive into these these mock draft simulator. Uh, I guess the only few little nuggets I saw Doug Marone. I saw his uh, interview at the LSU Pro Day. You know, he kind of talked about pinning how they see him going forward. He's still rehab, and they kind of expect him to be healthy um, by training camp. We'll see. Uh, same thing for Cesar Ruiz. 
So, you know, I mean, no real news, but it's just, you know, interesting that they say Penn and been, you know, been in the facility every day trying to get after it. So, you know, we'll see where he is. And, you know, I will say D.A. did kind of, he said something like it's concerning that he had two foot injuries. Mm. Like, he just, he just had, he made a point to say that's concerning. So I just thought that was interesting. You know what I'm saying? Like, that- that's, that's which it is. It is concerning. Like it's like, mm, like it's his size, is way he plays. Is that something that's affecting his foot? I don't know. I don't know. But um, that's one of the things I took away. What else? Uh, the Jari Evans joined the oh, coaching yeah. staff. Uh, Beautiful. Love it. Love it. Love it. And uh, Doug Marone said like. Jari Evans to him was the best finisher he ever coached, which, you know, if you look at like Caesar Reeves, that's mm-hmm. something he he improved on last year and still needs to improve. And something pending is spectacular. It's, it's, it's finishing. If he ain't good at nothing else, he'll finish a fucking play, bro. Penning will finish that yes, shit. He will. <laughs> finish it, bro. <laughs> With the quickness. Um, Let's see. I think that's. I think that kind of hits on it all. Uh, I, 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 mean, I, I do want to get this out because I, it, and I want to be careful and mindful, I should say, of how I say this. If you're in the Discord, you probably have already received this news or read it. I'm just gonna say in the in the in the the most not hot take way I can say and I'm saying this and I'm not reporting it but it just all it just would not shock me if the Saints moved up in this draft from 29 now I know that's like that's obvious like because the Saints always move up um Mm -hmm. but they you know they potentially may move up and if they move up they may want a non-defensive player so I'm gonna say if you if you're in the Discord, you are you've already, you know, have gotten some 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 tidbits about it. Uh, we've talked about it in the Discord um, and in text message in depth. The only thing I will say is that if you're if they're moving up from 29 to like 14, 13, can someone please, please, please take pictures of the trade that the Lions and the Vikings did, who are in the same division, and just just, just tape it to just Mickey's monitor. Just mo- multiple of them. Just, I, want, I, want them, I want that bitch cover. He's like, what? what? The, the, the Lions didn't give up a 2023 first round? What? Like, I, I, just, I just, just need... Just need a pop-up. Just pop up on his <laughs> screen. Just, 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 just need it. If he's on his iPhone, you know, you get the... the you know the ads. I need. I need that to pop up on as an ad. I just. I just need it because if they make a move like this, which as a, as a fan, I'm not opposed to, if it's a good player. But any potential trade, if the Saints move up, from, move from 29 to 15, 14, 13, whatever. If it includes next year's first round draft pick, it is a awful awful trade i don't care who the fuck they draft unless fucking cj stroud or bryce young falls that far it's an awful trade because it would be the absolute and i'm not trying to put this out in the in the universe for this to happen but it would be the absolute most saints thing ever for them to trade from 29 13 draft player x maybe offensive player maybe they draft the um, the defensive tackle from from Pittsburgh, whatever, give up next year's draft pick. Oh no, God forbid! Um, you know, Derek Carr has a injures himself in training camp. He's out for the season. James Winston injures himself in week three. Like I'm talking like a Katrina season, like to the max, and we are awful this season. And they end up with the first pick or the second pick of next year's draft and it is not even theirs if that's not the Whoa. most saints fucking outcome 
And for Ever. anybody that's thinking, oh, that would if anybody thinking that wouldn't happen, <laughs> oh, yeah. we the Ever. Saints were only with a pick in top five, or the Eagles were only with a pick in top five this season until like the last five or six games. So yes. let's not act like that wouldn't happen. They just they can't, Ryan. If they want to make a move like that, they absolutely cannot give up cannot. their 2024 first round draft pick. They can't do it, man. Like it would <laughs> We're doing the live stream, bro. If we just we see, we see that Florida League come up at like pick eleven, bro. Oh, oh my god! Like That's I wouldn't even care, too, bro. You know I, I wouldn't even go pop up, dude. I wouldn't even care about who they drafted at that point. I'd be like, just show us the compensation. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, I I want to say this as a rule too. If you're listening to this podcast, if you are attending the live draft, the live, uh, the draft live stream that we're doing, um, round one of the draft, it's only for Patreons, by the way. Uh, please do not, if you're attending, I'm making a general across the board. No, like, no being on your phone, no being on social media. Um, it kind of ruins the organicness of of the point of what we want the a draft live stream to be. If someone sees on yeah. Twitter what happened and it, you know, they can't keep it to them. It just ruins it. It ruins it. So that's all. That's all I wanted to say. I was thinking about that a couple of days ago. I was like, yeah, I got, got to put that out just so for organic purposes. We like, I want it to be on YouTube and like social media. I want my pain, Ryan's pain, Joey's pain, Daniel's like Elise's pain of just like oh, we gave up next year's first round pick. Oh, like <laughs> anyway, anyhow, anything else we we want to hit on before we we hit these mock draft simulators up? No, nah, bro, let's do it. All right, so we are we're starting with the Pro Football Network mock draft simulator. It's one. Um, a lot of people use. I know the PFF mock draft simulator came under attack because they, they put that bitch under a paywall. Um, so <laughs> it was a whole whole little thing that happened. Um, so what? we're starting with yes. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was it was like what two weeks ago. It was, it was a, a little tiff on the the small section of draft. Draft Twitter, I, I still am a part of on, on Twitter. Um, so we are starting with Pro Football <laughs> Network. Uh, also, just a little tease, we will have our annual uh, Tony Pauline episode who is and works for Pro Football Network. So we are recording that on Tuesday morning, California time. Um, we're going to ask, speaking of which, we're going to ask him about the things we were just talked about. Maybe some positions the Saints, you know, he, maybe you've heard the Saints are... Um, really in you know really honing in on you know, you know are they potentially moving up to move up to draft certain position love our episode we do with tony every year please this is me preemptively asking this please make sure you listen to it i feel like we do those episodes with tony and they, they never get enough listens as and downloads as they deserve because there's so many there's so much great content yeah. information in them um, so please be on the lookout for that. Hopefully to draft uh, to drop. Excuse me, next Tuesday at some point during the day. Anyway, let's get started. Um, I'm not gonna like I'll I'll let it go at a normal pace and at certain points where I feel like I need to stop, uh, I'll stop it. But here here we go. All right, Carolina Carolina Panthers on the clock. Who are they? Which quarterback are they going to take? They go C.J. Stroud. Bryce Young goes to the Texans. The Cardinals is really kind of where the draft starts. Uh, drafts Christian Gonzalez, which is extremely surprising and cannot see that happening, but who knows? It's the fucking draft. You never know. Uh, Cornerback from Oregon. The Colts go Anthony Richardson. Seahawks goes Will Levis. Very interesting. Uh, The Lions go Will Anderson. Or that happens, I might become a like a like a little low a down low Lions fan, bro. Like, (laughs) give me hot under the collar. Uh, Raiders go Paris Johnson, offensive tackle. Jalen Carter goes to the Falcons, which I do hear that that is his floor. Um, also, can we just say, just really quick, 
Like that Falcons like defensive line, they might bully the Saints offensive oh. line a little bit, bro. Like <laughs> it's beefy, bro. It's beefy. God, you got um. They added Calais Campbell to it, and I, I, I don't know. Anyway, anyway, but them if the Falcons just added uh, Jalen Carter to that front, and I I'm kind of hearing that is his floor. That would be disgusting. No, thank you. Um, Bears go Miles Murphy, edge rusher. Eagles, which is the pick they got from the Saints, go Devon Witherspoon, cornerback from Illinois. Uh, Jackson Smith uh, uh, and Jigba goes to the Texans at pick 12. Um, I do believe this is not me reporting. I do believe that uh, this is a sense I get, and I can't, I haven't confirmed it yet, but I get a sense that the Saints are in love with Jackson Smith and Jigba. It's just a sense I'm I'm getting. I um let's see. Jets at 13 go Tyree Wilson, edge rush from Texas Tech. So he takes a little bit of a fall. Uh, Patriots go defensive tackle Bryce Brees uh, from Clemson. The Packers at 15 go Peter. I don't know. Skol, Skoronsky, uh offensive tackle Northwestern. At this point, this is what I'm asking you. Is there anyone, if this is me, me and you are doing this draft, we're the GMs of the Saints. You got We got Bajan Ramos still on the board. Um, is there anyone that you're like, man, I feel like we should trade up for him? I'm not getting that sense. I'm just, I'm good letting, you know, letting it go. Let it go. Let it go. All right. Commanders go. Uh, Lucas Van Ness, edge rusher. That seems like a weird pick because they have so many edge rushers they don't know what to do with. Um, Cam, Cam Smith, uh, cornerback from South Carolina, goes to the Steelers. The Lions go Joy Porter Jr. with their uh, second first round pick. The Chiefs from 32 trades to 19 drafts wide receiver Jordan Addison, USC. Mm. 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 Okay. Tw- 20. Wait, who did? Oh, wait, never mind. Sorry. Uh, the Seahawks go uh, Isaiah uh, Foskey, edge rusher from Notre Dame, mm-hmm. 21. The Chargers go Quentin Johnson, wide receiver, TCU. Ravens go cornerback uh, Deontay Banks. Vikings go Trenton Simpson, yep. cornerback or linebacker, excuse me, Clemson. The Jags go uh, Keely Ringo, cornerback, Georgia. Anyone still in the range? Like uh, we got, we got Michael Mayer on the board. We got Gibbs. We got Bajon Robinson still on the board, bro. Like keep going, keep going, bro. All right, all right, let it go, let it go. Giants go Brian Branch, safety, Alabama. Cowboys go <laughs> Bajon Robinson. Of course, bro, mm-hmm. would be the most Jerry Jones fucking pick ever, ever. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Bills go ah Michael Mayer to the Bills at uh, twenty seven. Bengals twenty eight go Darnell Wright off the tackle Tennessee. We the Saints are on the clock. Um, if we're just going by the big board that Pro Football Network has, um, they have. Dalton Kincaid tied in Utah as like the best prospect overall right now. Um, Jamar Gibbs is on the board. Zay, Zay Flowers is on the board. If I switch over to defense, um, we have Nolan Smith, Ed Rusher, Georgia. Um, the defensive tackle that everyone from in Saints Twitter hopes falls to them. And I don't even know. I haven't even heard his name pronounced. I'm so out of tune with, I can't even, is it Kaylee Jog Clancy? Oh, Clancy, yeah. Yeah, Clancy, Pittsburgh, who just absolutely had an insane pro day recently. So, this is tough, man. (laughs) I I think... I, okay, I say it's tough for us. I think if the board fell like this, I can almost guarantee you the Saints would draft Clancy and would not think 
a second about. You would think so, right? I think so. I think you. I think you would. I think he could be like an Aaron Donald light. He's so like I saw. I saw a glimpse of him on Twitter, like a 15, 25 second clip of Bucky Brooks talking about him. And the first thing I thought was if there, if he's being compared to Aaron Donald, like he's even more undersized than Aaron Donald was. Yeah. Yes. He he's like, he's, he's, I think just a limited, I watched with him, you know who I think he could be. If he hits, I think he could be Javon Hardgrave. Ryan, it's time to tell the listeners a secret. Yo, the, the infamous picture of you going viral on social media, sweating in the white shirt, mm. looking confused. What people don't know is before that picture was taken, you had just mowed the lawn in the hot New Orleans heat. Yep, sweating. Don't know about you, but if you want to avoid becoming a meme and avoid becoming a viral hit on social media, I think instead of you mowing the lawn, there's a company out there that got you covered. That is Ground Up Landscaping Services. They service the greater New Orleans area. We've seen their work in person at the hashtag Saints for the Podcast Meetup. The backyard area was outstanding. Yeah, we know, we know the owner of this company. He's an outstanding person, a really good dude. And look, I've seen pictures of his work all over done all around New Orleans. Beautiful work. Everything he takes care of, him and his crew, and he's good, honest, and on time. Uh, If you want to visit them, visit www.groundupnola.com, and you get the book of free quote. And these guys are licensed and insured. So this is not some, you know, shade tree, you know, guy to come cut your grass. These are dependable business business professionals that will take care of your lawn and they do beautiful work that you can check out on their Instagram and Facebook. They'll make your garden space spectacular from the ground up. This is the story of the one as head of maintenance at a concert hall. He knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working. The HVAC is humming and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24 7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. You prepared your kids for their first steps the first day at school, their first dance, that big test, all the wins along the way. With a College Savings Iowa 529 plan, you'll prepare them for even more. Register before May 31st for a chance to win a $1,000 contribution. Visit collegesavingsiowa.com to make the first move toward a bright future. College Savings Iowa. It's how parents get through college. Administered by the State Treasurer of Iowa. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. What are your thoughts about the the Hargrave comparison? No, I, I think that that kind of fits. And my question is, does he really fit the prototype? Mm. I, don't know if, I don't know if I see it. And you know, just being a prototype doesn't mean they have to draft the player within that prototype. But it, correct, you know, it is something. Uh, what other edge rushers are available? Edge rushers. Um, let's see. Uh, Bj Ojolari from LSU. Um, you have the one that has gets mocked to the Saints a lot, whether it be at twenty nine or forty, and Keon White, Georgia Tech. Um, oh yeah, well, he fits. Defensive, bro. He, uh, he defensive... fits that prototype, bro. Does he? <laughs> yeah, he does, man. That I haven't studied a bunch of them. Not really that great, but he is a pass rusher. Like, he's a pass rusher first. I think he's old though, bro. not old, but he's like almost twenty five. And he, he's what? Old, almost 25 and raw. Yeah. Man. He's almost 25 and raw. Get that old nigga away from me, bro. 
what? I think he was like he was like a tight end at first or something, bro. Like, I don't know. Okay, so he's, like, he was always well, searching for a position. So he's twenty. He's twenty four. He yeah. just he just turned twenty four. So he'll be twenty. Right. No, man. I'm, no, <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> he fits their profile, though, bro. I've not so watched. Are we, doing, are we drafted? Are we drafted our player? Or are we drafted? We're drafted our player, bro. We got the R play. Okay. Man, give me Gibbs, man. <laughs> Done. I don't give a fuck. Give me Gibbs, bro. That dude, he reminds me of Camara. Like, honestly, like that's what I when I see him. Yes. He reminds me of Camara. He's a little more physical. Um, but he, he's just man, I just I just like him. I see him and I'm like, man, give me that. Give me that. Whoa, God. <laughs> what the hell was that? So I don't know what happened. I, I don't know if it froze when when we had technical issues, but it dra- so it drafted us. I'm it drafted us Nolan Smith, but we're pretending that our pick was <laughs> was. I, I'm not going back. I'm not redoing it. In this in this first one, it was Gibbs at 29. Okay, cool. Uh, Dalton Kincaid went to the Eagles at pick 30. Fuck that'd be such a great pick. Fuck that pick. Um. The Bucks drafted. That's who the that's who um the Chiefs traded with uh, to go to nineteen. Uh, the Bucks drafted Darnell Washington from Georgia. Yeah. Um. Going on. So. Uh, Mazzy Smith, defensive tackle, uh, from Michigan, went to the uh, Cardinals at thirty four. Uh, let's see. The Rams drafted. Uh, Keon White, Georgia Tech, edge rusher. The Seahawks drafts uh, Jalen Hyatt, wide receiver, Tennessee. That would be a disgusting pick. Don't want that to happen. <laughs> uh, Raiders draft Zay Flowers, Boston College at 38 in round two. So he takes a big tumble because there's talks of him being potentially the first right receiver off the board in mm-hmm. round one. The Panthers right above us take defensive tackle Ika from Baylor, who is another uh, defensive tackle that I um, have seen being mocked to the Saints numerous times. And now we're back on the clock at pick 40. Um, we took Gibbs at pick 29. Clancy still on the board, which I don't potentially, I just don't see that being feasible no. with how he's worked out. There's also that defensive tackle, uh, was it Abu War from North Washington or sorry Northwestern, who's on the board. Still have the edge rusher BJ Jolari from LSU on the board. Hmm. I mean, we went running back round one, man. Go get uh, a DB War, man. Go get who? Go get a DB War. You talking about uh, the uh, defensive tackle from Northwestern? Yeah. Edge. Edge, you take them. Just DL. Yep. Edge, <laughs> yeah, D-line. All right. Mm-hmm. So, so in this, in the Pro Football Network mock draft simulator, at pick 29, we drafted Jamar Gibbs, running back from Alabama. Pick 40, we drafted... Uh, <laughs> Adiba Wara, I want to. I, I got to hear it. Be, I got to hear it pronounced. Then I can pronounce it. Um, Adiba, pick, Adiba Wara. Um, sure, <laughs> sure, Ryan. <laughs> Fucking sure. I'm um, not saying his first name. Fuck that shit. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. A man, a man has <laughs> gotta have a code. Anyway, so that was the first mock draft simulator for Pro Pro Football Network. Now we're doing the NFL mock draft database hopefully it doesn't mess up like <laughs> the other one just did while we were recording all right let's go uh okay start panthers cj stroud texans oh okay well now now you're just lying <laughs> the texans drafted tyree wilson <laughs> texas tech at the second pick of the draft what? Oh, okay sure uh <laughs> the cardinals drafted drafts jalen Carter, uh, okay, I'm not doing this mock draft simulator. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. No, you mean, your AI you mean... game up, bro. <laughs> that was that was terrible. No, um, 
We're gonna we're just gonna use the Pro Football Network, my Johnson Blader again. <laughs> they had see, they had Bryce Young at the what I just closed out of at pick four. They the Colts had him on the board and they didn't draft him. No, I'm not. No, I'm not doing this. <laughs> not doing it. Sorry. All right, one more more round on the Pro Football. Uh, network uh, mock simulator, and we're gonna wrap up this episode. Look, I got the PFF. I got the PFF simulator up. If you want to do oh, it. do you? Oh, yeah, that's right. We do have a. Okay, go go for it. De- go for it. All right, let's start this draft up. We're not doing any trades, right? Uh, unless we just see something that we feel like we got to have, I would say no. Okay. Or they try they charge extra for up. trades. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm just my first time using it, so okay. Okay. Let's see how it went. Okay, you had Bryce Young go number one overall to okay. the Panthers, uh, CJ Stroud to the Texans, Will Anderson to the Cardinals, Loves the Colts, Tyree Wilson to the Seahawks, Jalen Carter okay. to the Lions, mm. uh, Andy Richardson to the Raiders, um, Skrinsky to the Falcons, um, Devon Witherspoon uh, to the Bears. Paris Johnson tackle to the Eagles, Christian Gonzalez to the Titans, who I think are a sneaky team to move up to the top. Oh, of the yes. draft. Um, uh, Lucas Van Ness to the Texans, Broderick Jones, Jets, Miles Murphy, Edge to the Patriots, Quentin Johnston, wide receiver to the Packers. Oh, um, okay, so wh- where are we at pick wise right now? Uh, uh, we had 16. Smith or Jigba's on the board? He's going to the Washington Redskins. Okay, never mind. <laughs> keep, keep it going then. I was like, oh, yeah. maybe we can no, move it, up. Never mind. It's already flown through. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. It's already through. Oh, okay. My fault. <laughs> uh, yeah. Joey Porter Jr., Nolan Smith, Lions, B. John Robinson, uh, to the Bucks. Ugh. Deontay Banks. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be such a, that would be such a Bucks pick, too. Oh my God! Dante Banks to the uh, Seahawks, Zay Flowers to the Chargers, Dalton Kincaid to the uh, Ravens, Brian Branch to the um, Ravens, Anton Harrison to the Jags, Brian Breesy, Giants, Michael Mayer, Cowboys. Ah, come on! <laughs> Osiris Turns to the uh, Bills, Kalaja Cansey. To the Bengals. A so, pick right before we got, ours. We got, uh, we got Jordan Addison. You got Will McDonald, Josh Downs, um, Mozzie Smith. So in, uh, in this in this version, I know Gibbs is still on the board. And yeah. I, j- just for the purpose of being different, I don't want to do the same thing we did in the, in the last draft. I watched... Quite a, I watched two games of Jordan Addison Tuesday morning. I came okay. away with, and I tweeted it, and it's, it's one of the few draft takes I have this draft season, is I see a lot of Devontae Smith in his game. Mm. Very slight, undersized wide receivers. Um, and maybe you, you, you kind of, I don't want to say you question, but like you maybe have some concerns about... Um, them, you know, holding up phys- physically throughout a season. And we saw it. I think, you know, Chris Olave is also a good example of it. Uh, you know, you know, he didn't make a lot of contested catches. And that's something that he has to get better in his his, his second year in the league. But I, I just watched enough of Jordan Addison. And don't get me wrong. He plays with an absolutely incredible quarterback. But, and I and I think that helps a lot. But I think if you could add Jordan Addison to this team, um, it kind of, you know, whatever happens with Michael Thomas this season, if Jordan Addison's on the team, it's kind of like, you know, ice on the cake. Um, but if he doesn't have a great, you know, if he has injuries and Michael Thomas like that, you did would have at least a wide receiver core consisting of Chris Olave, Shahid, and Jordan Addison. Now, I think – the other question to that is like, can you be successful in the NFL kind of having a, a wide receiver 
group that you don't really have a lot of physicality in it. Like that's a lot of like explosion, like route running and and stuff like that. But like who's like getting you like the yards? So is Quentin Johnson still on the board? Uh no, he's gone. Okay. So if, if it was me, and I and the only thing I know the pushback also may be he didn't test well. Like he did not work out. Jordan Addison did not work out well, like at all. But if, if it was me, I, I like him as a player. That's who my that's who I would be arguing for banging the table for at 29. Hmm. What um because he's gone, uh Quentin Johnson's gone. Um so you wanna go Jordan Addison? Let's, let's let's go Jordan Addison. Let's go Jordan Addison. Let's go Jordan Addison, bro. I mean, let's go, bro. Let's do it. Let's do it. Send it in. I, the the funny thing is, I actually think he could be there because of his workout numbers. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Um, they flew through. Danelle Wright went to the Eagles. Kalaji Ringo, Chiefs. Cam Smith. <clears throat> Steelers, Will McDonald went to the Texans, Mazzy Smith, uh, Cardinals, Josh Downs, Colts, Gibbs went to the Chargers, uh, Zell Fosley, Fosley went to the Seahawks, um, Jack Campbell, linebacker, went to the Raiders, Luke Musgrave, tight end, went to the Panthers, and we are on the clock. Let's see, you got DeWan Jones, the tackle out of Ohio State, um, Felix, I haven't watched this guy. Felix, I haven't watched, I haven't watched single tape. Key, Uzama, yeah, I know you're talking about. Edge, yeah. BJ Ojalari, LSU, hadn't watched him either. Uh, See, I've, Forbes, back. I've not watched a lot of BJ. I haven't watched him like prospect wise, but in watching LSU games last, this last season, he does flash a lot. I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know in profile wise if he met, if he makes the Saints meets the Saints profiles. We'll do that when we do the the prospect matching. But um, Diva War he's still there. Um, Tuli out of USC, he's there. Andre Carter out of the Army. <laughs> no, no. How, here's, 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 Morgan, a, baby. here's a question for you. I don't know if he's on the board. Um, I'm not hearing a lot of, def- and I don't want to go, um, the Northwestern defensive tackle again. Cause we went, is, uh, Osiris Terrence still on the board, bro? Uh, Osiris Terrence. Who's Osiris? Or did he get drafted earlier? I don't think he's on the board. From Florida. And you know, I'm on this stupid PFF big board and you know how they break shit, bro. Terribly. <laughs> Terribly. I'm not seeing him. <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> like I have on page four, bro, and I'm not seeing like is he that lowly ranked by PFF? Wouldn't surprise me at all. Would not surprise me in the least. No, there he, he's so far down the line, bro. I'm not even seeing him, bro. <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's, so, that's so fucking ridiculous. That's so ridiculous, man. <laughs> um, um. All right, I, 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 I bang the table for Jordan Addison. I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you make the the pick at at forty. You know what? Um, you know, maybe I don't know how. I don't. I really don't know where this guy would get drafted. But Darnell Washington, he's not oh, perfect. Oh, he's on the board? He's on the board, baby. Send it in, bro. Send it in. Don't, don't, I don't got here. Got another word. Send it in. Sent. I don't know how much of a playmaker he's going to be, bro, but he's going to be physical, Man. strong, and you got an athlete to work with. I don't know bro, how much of a playmaker. I don't know how much of a playmaker he's going to be either, bro. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I watched, like, I really I watched a bit of him Tuesday morning, and, like, I – He's more impressive as an inline block on the line. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. He's like he has a lot to like. It's just an open book, in which it's kind of like Jimmy Graham was as far as like yeah. 
But he like, but actually blocks. I don't, I don't know. But he actually blocks, right? You know what I'm saying? So, Send it in, I don't bro. know. It could be Mercedes Lewis. It could be, I don't know. So we got Jordan Addison and Darnell Washington, bro. I ain't man, mad. I ain't mad at all. <laughs> and the, the the sneaky thing, and it's not really sneaky, but the the good thing about Darnell Washington is, yes, he's a quote unquote weapon, but he actually improves your offensive line at least initially, probably more than he improves your passing and receiving game. Right, and the run game, you know, and your so, run game. You you know, you get him on the, you got him. You get a healthy pinning, um, and you, like you got you got some you got some Mahler, bro, and Jamal, what, bro, uh, send it in. And I know people are like, well, what about defense? I don't care. Da, you the defensive head, you a head cook, cook some defense up. I, I hey, listen, figure it bro, out. Like you think? Look, you're not okay. You're not getting to the Super Bowl. If you get to the Super Bowl, you think you beat the Chiefs with um, defense? With whoever you draft, like no, you nope. You gonna have to outscore, bro. You are gonna have to outscore. And even if we look back, even when the Saints had Drew Brees in his latter years, you know it always caught up to them come to the playoffs, man. Where they just did not have enough ammunition, not have enough weapons in the clip to to go, bro. They didn't have it, man. They didn't have it. They take away Mike Thomas, and we didn't have nothing. You know, so I mean, if if you want to go. Whatever you do this offseason, you're not going to create the number one defense in the last 10 years. You're just not. And that's what you would need to be like a defensive uh, team that leads you to a Super Bowl. You're just not going to have that type of defense. You can have a good defense, but you're not going to have like a <laughs> defense that leads you to a Super Bowl. But offensively, there is a possibility that you could have a very explosive, dangerous offense with a lot of weapons that, you know, that could take you places, man. All it takes is plays. And if you've got an offense that's making plays, bro, that shit could take you a long way. It can. It can. Um, Which draft would you prefer? Gibbs at 29 and... um, I can't. I can't say his name, Ryan. I can't say his the name. Sorry. One. Yeah. Um. At forty or Jordan uh, or the combination of Jordan Addison and Darnell Washington. I like that Jordan Addison most, baby. I don't know, man. Just, <laughs> just, get, get me, just get me going a little bit. Just get me going a little what bit. What we've been saying, bro. What we've been saying all off season, man. Just be fun, and then at be least fun will be fun. Fun and just fucking flood, Derek Carr. With weapons, bro. Weapons, bro. You got Taysom Hill, got Kamara, got Addison, Olave. And you got to remember, Jordan, Chris Olave and Rashid Shaheed are going into their second year, bro. Like, they mm-hmm. are they are due for leaps, especially Shaheed. Like, he has so much room to grow um, and so much opportunity as he gets more playing time that we don't even really know. He was just, you know, sniffing the surface of what he could do. The surface, man. So, like so, just man, like it could be bonkers if those dudes really show up. Um, and and I think the the thing about the the second one, the second draft, I think it's actually maybe realistic, man. I do feel yeah. that Jordan Addison will be there at twenty nine. Um, he did not work out well at the combine. His RAS score is low. That might preclude the Saints from drafting him in general but like I've watched enough of him like he is a playmaker on the field he do- I just I know he's probably he's not as hyped as Devontae Smith was at the prospect and I don't think he is as good as Devontae Smith was because Devontae Smith was a dog like for him to oh. be the size he, he is a dog for him to be the size yeah. that he is he plays much bigger I'm not saying Jordan yeah. Addison isn't you know but he, it, but in terms of like route running, precision, yeah. catches the ball, fluid, saying say whatever you want to say. Them USC wide receivers, bro, you don't they don't miss. No nah, man, like no. you know it was Juju Amara. Um, there's another one that we liked 
that I, I'm um who am I forgetting? There's Juju, there's Amara. Who played with Juju for the longest time that I really like to? I can't remember. Um Robert Woods. Yes, Robert Woods. Whatever USC has put out talented pro NFL route receivers. Like their their hit rate has been consistently high. Go get Jordan Addison. Um, go get Darnell Washington and just, just have fun, bro. Like yeah. Zooms would be lit. We might we might be losing games 35 to 38, bro, but <laughs> we gonna be lit in that bitch. But we know we already know, bro. I just don't see it. They're not sitting there at 29, bro. It's not just happening. not doing it, man. Not happening. No shot. Not happening, bro. Like they are going to move up. Yes. Where and how much it will cost, we shall see. But they are going to move up. Anyhow, y'all, I know this was a long episode. Uh, uh, this again, it's like we love doing this episode, but it is not the most podcast friendly version of episode because it you, visually you see nothing. All you do is just hear us clicking fucking buttons. We apologize. <laughs> um, but the draft is less than thirty days away. Um, it still hasn't hit me yet. I don't. It may not hit me until I'm sitting at redacted location and it's like, oh shit, like the draft is about to fuck start. Um, but let's enjoy it. It's it's gonna be fun. Uh, hope hopefully the Saints don't fuck this up. You, they just they just do what they need to do and just draft good players. Um, we are we do have a Saints Twitter podcast draft shirt t shirt uh, that is dropping. I believe I'm going to try to have it up uh, tomorrow on Thursday, if not Friday. Um, so you can order it and it, you know, hopefully it should be here before, before the day of the draft. So you can wear it proudly, wear it around New Orleans, wear it around wherever you are. If you, if you buy one, take a picture of, of it. Um, shout out to uh, my dude, Joy, for the, the design idea. Uh, the shirt came out great. So, Thank you so much for for your input in that, Joy. It it was a great idea. We will be back next week. Tuesday, we are recording with Tony Pauline from Pro Pro Football Network. Talk more draft stuff. Maybe we're going to have potentially have another guest on towards the end of next week. Um, Other than Tony Pauline, we'll see. But thank you all so much for, for listening and just taking the time and just supporting us. As always, we truly, truly appreciate it. We shall see what happens at the draft. Its countdown is underway. And with that, we're out. This is the story of the one. As head of maintenance at a concert hall, he knows the show must always go on. That's why he works behind the scenes, ensuring every light is working, the HVAC is humming, and his facility shines. With Granger's supplies and solutions for every challenge he faces, plus 24-7 customer support, his venue never misses a beat. Call quickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Baker's, where you'll find over 30,000 mouth-watering choices that excite your inner foodie. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices, plus extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week. You can also save up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with fuel points. More savings and more inspiring flavors make shopping Baker's worth it every time. Baker's, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply.